For some, payment is just sending and receiving money, but it goes beyond that. In between that end-to-end -end process, there should be an automated system that makes payment processes seamless, fast, and more importantly, successful. On this episode of Focus On, we'll look at how blockchain is revolutionizing the digital payment ecosystem and how one company, Zone, is tapping into this to offer solutions. I'm Esther Awoni. Welcome. With the successes recorded through technology in the financial sector, some bottlenecks have remained, hindering the full benefits of the transformation process, particularly in digital payments. Zone is at the center of leading an evolution through blockchain, automating payment processes, and speeding up the time in resolving frictions across the end-to-end -end channel. When we were thinking of the, you know, the vision of having a global network uh, that powers payments, not just um, through any means, right? Any currency and any means. What we decided was we needed to have something that could automate trust. And the reason why this is key is every network requires trust, right? Um, so what you have traditionally is to have trust between part participants of a network, you have to have an intermediary. So that's what happens traditionally. So that's why you have switching networks that have switches in the middle. The reason why you have that is the switch role is to provide trust across the network so that when things are happening like transactions between the participants, there's a central entity that is able to provide report or some validation of what is going on in the network. With blockchain, you don't have that challenge because that whole process is automated by default the way it's built, right? So blockchain achieves trust in an automated way. The other thing it does also is transparency. So what you have, unlike the traditional system where everybody has a copy of their data and they have to reconcile to make sure that in cases there were disputes, they have to reconcile and find out, you know, where, where's the gap. For blockchain, naturally this is solved because the data gets replicated across the network between the participants in a secure and automated way. So again, you can trust the process of the platform to ensure that you know, the systems are reconciled automatically. So for us, it was a no brainer when it comes to why are we leveraging blockchain? Because the technology, although is new, right? Um, it solves a major problem of disintermediation and the need not to have an, an intermediary in the network to automate it. I'll give you an example. We've been able to sign up the top tier banks. In fact, almost all the commercial banks in, in Nigeria currently, top tier banks from about are in the top 20 banks in Africa, right? And they sign up to Zone. We're currently live in a couple of them already, and we're rolling out. So it's been quite interesting. Um, I think the value proposition speaks for itself, and the fact that just having a network that basically takes out a lot of the reliability issues that come with um, reconciliation and chargebacks and co, it's been a significant thing for them, and the taking it up and we see not just on the commercial banks, but we've seen large adoption on the fintech side too, where you have the digital banks, the upcoming fintechs, even the, um, the big fintechs basically, you know, excited about this and having a technology that is able to not just allow frictionless payments, but in a reliable way. Achieving a frictionless payment process will be a major boost in the financial ecosystem, considering the countless queries received daily on failed or incomplete transactions. Zone seems to have stepped into this to provide a solution to the challenge. We identified the opportunity to sort of remove friction in payment um, as an extension of what we were doing for the financial institutions. Uh, we wanted to build some interface uh, that was really unique and very frictionless for payments. We did all of that and it was fantastic. Um, 
But when it came to actual processing the payments, uh, we ran into glitches. Uh, we tried to connect with some of the existing payment infrastructure, uh, which is companies that connect the banks and allow money move. And we experienced significant friction, reliability issues, uh, cost issues. Uh, so while this interface was really fantastic, you know, the point that customers interact with, the back end, which is where money actually moves, was uh, a big challenge. Um, so we, 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 it, it became clear to us that with payments, um, the challenge was not at the front end, not, not with what we interact, the way the customers interact, but um, the back office, the back end, the way money flows, the way the financial institutions are connected. Um, and that kind of triggered us to sort of look uh, backward instead. But I'd like you to talk more about the the uh, inefficiencies in the payment uh, infrastructure uh, that we in, in the industry today. Just how wide how widespread is it? So the inefficiencies result from a simple sort of uh, architectural uh, limitation. Um, so payment has two parts: there's the front end and there's the back end. Right at the back. The way money flows is um, through a network. What has happened uh, in the past is that network has relied on a central intermediary to facilitate that flow. What that does is that the entire network inherits whatever limitations the central in intermediary has. So for example, if there are reliability issues, if there are reconciliation issues, if there are skill issues, the entire network inherits that because value has to flow from one financial institution through this intermediary to the other. If that intermediary, for example, is offline, not available, the entire network can't function. So this has been a significant issue um, in Nigeria. What that also does is that in other environments where you don't even have an intermediary, then interoperable payments can happen. And you see that in certain African countries, you see that for cross-border. Yeah. And what you've seen evolve to kind of temporarily substitute this interoperability is, you know, um, mobile money, for example, siloed types of payments. Uh, the challenge with those is that in those scenarios, both the sender and the receiver have to have their accounts in the same financial institution. So it's kind of limited in that way. But that's all because these interoperable payments rely on an intermediary to connect institutions into that network. So this is, this is a huge challenge um, we've seen and, and it's really prevalent um, you know, across the continent and even, even here in Nigeria. So let's talk about I mean, your Zone's value proposition. What do you bring into the table? Okay, exactly. So what we've done in Zone is to sort of reimagine the entire architecture and ask ourselves, look, why, why is there a need for an intermediary, right? Why not connect um, all of the different financial services providers um, directly to one another via the blockchain. So there's no middleman. Every transaction flows directly from sender, financial institution or bank to receiver. And every financial, financial institution on the network connects to every other financial institution on the network. That way, you don't have any scenario where there's one financial institution or one sort of uh, middleman that is unavailable and the whole network cannot function. It's more scalable and then it solves the problem of transparency of information. Um, when you have transparency of information, meaning both parties, sender and receiver, can view the status of transactions, then reconciliation problems go away. Um, you have challenges, for example, here in, in Nigeria where uh, somebody wants to do a transaction on the POS or ATM and the, the, charge, the account is charged and the transaction fails, right? So you have a discrepancy. On one side, there's a success. On the other side, there's a failure. The process of reconciling this takes weeks, days, weeks, even months. In the meantime, customers' funds are, are stuck, right? So what we do is on the blockchain, because this transparency is there, we are able to automate those uh, reconciliation in those scenarios and allow customers get refunds instantly. So these are just, yeah, um, that's part of our value proposition as well. 
So what, what has been the feedback so far, perhaps from customers and perhaps what are some of the challenges you experience while trying to do that? Yeah, so it, it, feedback has been fantastic. The industry is super excited. Um, I think a lot of the financial services providers, banks, fintechs, MFIs, have been thinking about alternatives. Um, some of what they see with reliability or success rates and with these reconciliation issues, chargebacks and so on, um, and especially when there's a lot of load. So more recently, um, during the cash crisis in, in, in Nigeria, it, will, it became even more evident. And a lot of the financial services providers um, sort of started to look out what, what options are there aside from the legacy infrastructure. Now our role, we don't provide payment uh, uh, solutions to the end user, to businesses or, or, or individuals, no. Okay. Our clients are financial services providers who can now use this infrastructure to create customer facing solutions for their own customers. So we're expecting more in terms of innovation going forward, you know, from blockchain. Uh, but I'd like to know what future do you see Zone playing uh, going into the future? Obviously, there's, I know there's a lot of innovation going on, uh, you know, in Zone, etc. But just picturing yourself, where you see yourself and the role perhaps you see yourself playing uh, in the future. Okay, great. So, yes, there's massive opportunity for blockchain across public private sector. Um, you know, apart from financial services in private sector, e-commerce, supply chain, and so on, in public sector, all of the areas where you need records to be trusted. Um, so whether it's voting or like uh, ID or immigration. So are, are you anticipating a broader acceptance as we go on? Yes, yes. We're going to have acceptance across board. For us in Zone, our focus is within driving adoption in financial services and starting with what we're doing, which we think, even though it seems radical now, but we think it's pretty basic, you know, with respect to where we think we're going. Um, so starting with processing payments in country and fixing a lot of the friction I talked about, reliability and uh, reconciliation and so on, but then evolving that to enable a new mechanism for cross-border settlement based on digital tokens. Um, as, as phase two, uh, and then building out into a regional network as well. And then next phase being facilitating this transition into um, digital currency and decentralized finance. Um, and that is where um, we create the opportunity to sort of expand financial inclusion significantly, build whole new forms of, of banking and payment leveraging this new technology. Digital currency adoption and a host of others are a few of the benefits of blockchain. The ongoing radical transformation in the ecosystem shows that there is more to expect. Well, thanks for staying tuned to this episode of Focus On. I'm Esther Awoni. Until next time, it's bye for now.